So can we just start with where you were born? I was born in Trinidad. Oh, right. And Trinidad, of course, is, is you know part of the Caribbean islands. West is, is the last island of the archipelago near to Venezuela. Oh, right. And what did you do there when you, obviously you grew up there? Well, what happened actually, um, I had a, a very interesting life because um, we lived in Trinidad. We lived um, in the city, at the city centre of Port of Spain. It was a very, very busy thoroughfare, you know, near to the eastern market in Port of Spain. And um, my, I became aware of my own existence at that point, you know. Um, and eventually, I had to, after my mother died, I was around the age of nine, I had to go to live with my grandmother and my brother and sisters in Tobago. Um, and that's where I, I stayed for quite a while, really. And that's where I discovered myself, really, as um, more or less as a, someone who was very keen on, on art and reading. did a lot of reading. Right. Yeah. So, so did you start begin painting then when you were well, quite young or was that something? Well at that particular uh, age I, I don't think I was painting as much. I, I was actually um, drawing, doing a lot of drawing. I was very curious about, um, in fact before I left Trinidad I had started drawing. I remember my father getting really upset with me because whenever he opened my exercise books all the pages and, and the margins were full of little drawings and um, I don't think he, he liked that. He always, and after that I then started to draw on every surface I could find, you know. So <laughs> I, started, I, was, I was a very, very unpopular child for that reason. I learned a lot from, uh, from my strict grandmother because she um, was very, very keen on education. She was always, she was always keen on, on a good knit of common sense and intelligence. She's, she believed in that. She used to say, she used to say common sense beat education any day. You know, she was told. So, so what she told was this native innate thing. And also, the family I came from was one very proud, I don't know why they were so proud of feelings, but there's, you know, there's a cut above. I don't know why, because they were poor. But yet at the same time, they had a dignity. And I got that from my grandmother and from the way I was brought up. And hard work, because my father worked pretty hard. Got a poem about him. She's very, a uh, woman, he, I think he worked himself into the grave ready. All the legacy you're left were your ways. Uh, that's one of the lines in the poem. You know, that's what he left. Um, so I think that is, that's, is part of, um, it's, it's, it's a cultural thing, but it's a DNA thing as well, mm. actually, I feel. Um, and that has been, and that, that's, so therefore, you don't, and my father used to say to me, um, even when I was in Trinidad, he says, if you don't succeed, if you don't get what you want, can you go back and try and try and try again. Because what, there's no failure. What we call, is not failure, it is a point of which you learn. To move on. Mm. So there's nothing like, he said there's nothing like failure. My father used to tell me that. He, you know, so and he used to recite to hit the nail on the head, boy, hit it with all your might, boy. He used to write still a little poem for me because, you know, you know, determination really. And he was a little bit like that. And then, interestingly enough, all my sons have got exactly the same thing. Your wives are saying to you just like your father. <laughs> but they were doing quite well, actually, better than I could have done at their age, but they're doing quite well. Well, before I came to England, I worked in civil service, but uh, at the same time, I, um, all my spare time was, was in painting. I went to the British Council Studios uh, at the time. Um, we had, you know, you didn't have to pay anything, you just went there and used the studios, and I pay, went there to paint every evening <coughs> for after work. But also, I, I did a lot of other things, actually. I was always one of those people full of energy. I was a member of the dance troupe, believe it or not, um, with G, you know, Jean Coggins' dance troupe, which I didn't keep it up because, um, uh, you know, uh, it was part of the, the thing that I had to drop. My father said to me, you're doing too much. I was painting, I was writing, working in civil service, going to dance troupe. I was 
course she even went for piano lessons, <laughs> believe it or not. He said, well, what are you doing? Which, and I was doing correspondence course in literature. So my father said to me, well, you know, you've got, to, you've got to sort of focus on what you want to do. So then I said, okay, I want to paint, I want to write, and that's where I, I continue. Um, going to the studio and, um, and, and painting. And it, was, it was fantastic because, in fact, uh, I, I eventually I began to have some success because I joined the Trinidad Art Society and they used to have uh, paint selections of painting, of work paintings. Um, and I always submitted something and I always got accepted. And one of the, the, one of the last ones I did, I got out of about five things I sent, I had three things accepted. And one of them was bought, a watercolour was bought, I was told by the governor, the aide -con of the governor. He, so he came in and he liked the little landscape watercolour and he bought that. Um, so I, there was, and that was very pleasing. But that, having said that, you see, I, I did not even think of, of pursuing a career as an artist. At all, it was just something I liked doing, and I did, until I was told by um, Aladdin and um, Vok not Vokrossen, Alphas Charles, who at the time, who ran the studios, said to me, well, listen, you go to Goldsmiths College, because we've been there, and it's a good college, and um, you can come back and, and, and teach, and so on. I wasn't thinking, I was thinking about teaching too much, although I did like teaching, but, I, you know, I wanted to really do art then. I, if it was a wake-up call for me, I, I, and from that point on I thought, right, okay, studying art, then I'm going to be an artist. I came to England in a long time, by 59, a long time. I left, uh, left Trinidad, I was in the civil service at that time, working, and I have to say, still painting and writing. And, um, and I left England to, to go to Goldsmiths College in 1959. So how did you, can you tell me a little bit about your time at Girls' College? Well, it, first, it was a bit of a culture shock to begin with, because first it was the cold, <laughs> and also I, for the very first time in my life, I actually became aware that I was a black person, you know, um, because um, I met a lot of prejudice you know, outside of college, but in college itself, um, I got on fine. There's a lot of, uh, made a lot of friends, and um, they used to call me the philosopher because I was always talking, talking, talking philosophy, and want to explain things and want to find all about stuff, you know. And, um, and I had a great time with, uh, with, with um, my friends. Um, but I have to say, though, um, after about six months, the money that I had saved, um, you know, to for coffee for my education, I was left stranded really, and I had to um, find ways of of surviving. And I remember in actually not having much to eat, and and all, and, uh, you know, more or less, uh, people said I was starving, but I, <laughs> that's very dramatic to put it that way. But I didn't have a lot, didn't have much to eat, didn't have anything at some days. But I had to find work. So I remember while I was at the college, deciding I got to find work and I don't care what it is. So I decided to take one side, I think it was the long, what was it called? Um, it's a very long, long road that led from Goldsmiths College in New Cross into Peckham. And I took, I crossed the road and I decided that every business place I found on my way towards Peckham, I don't care what it is, I'm going to go and ask for work. And I know that, in fact, some of it will be inappropriate. It's not a thing, you know. But I thought psychologically, it gives me courage. I have to do something. So I went into And of course, everybody said, no, can you imagine walking into hairdressers and asking for work? Or walking into barbershop? Or walking, you know, no, I'm sorry, no. So all the way down. You know, you know, you, you confront things. So I went in and um, he says, I said, well, I've, well, yes, what do you want? I said, well, I've come for that job, cleaning the factory floor. He said, I'm sorry, it's not for, it's for, it's for women. I, the job is for women, not for, not for likes of you, really. So I said, what do you mean? I mean, he said, I, uh, I can do the job. 
Does anyone? He said, well, no, I'm afraid it's, um, you know, it's from, I didn't move, I stood there. And he said to me, you, 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 you're a student, aren't you? I said, yes. I said, the college just across the road. Um, and he said, oh, right, I suppose, yeah, okay. You can come and, 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 what, and you know, clean the floors in the garden. So um, I was very pleased. So I got up in the morning, I just started at six o'clock to do that, to clean it. So, but in, in time for, for work, for this come to work. And, um, and after I went to college, and after college, I went to Peckham, the Wimpy Bar. And I worked at the Wimpy Bar until two in the morning. Then I went home, went to bed, got six o'clock, yeah, and I did that. Been doing that for quite, you know, while. Yes, uh, I think, yeah, there are, it's what I mean, you know, there are a lot of, um, you know, just in, in, in this, in this life, you've got good people, you've got people not so good, <laughs> you know, I was lucky, really, to find some good ones who yeah. helped me, really. So where, did you get a teaching job after u university, then? Oh, yes, university. the very, the very first, uh, my very first interview, <laughs> amazing, really, I got the, I got a job. It was a grammar technical school for boys. And where was that? It was in South Shields oh. in, in Northumberland. And it was an interesting place because, again, again, another bit of a culture shock because they had this, um, it was a, a school where every, every teacher wore, uh, you know, the gowns, sort of uh, graduate, you know, university gowns and, and so on. And they all dressed up like this. And even the pre prefects had little, Little guns that they wore, you know, <laughs> which kept to keep order, and um, it was quite it was quite interesting. Mas I I didn't bother about things like that. I didn't care about, about that. And uh, the woodwork teacher didn't have have his. And there's another guy from um, he was a Italian who was working in chemistry in the school. He didn't have one, but it was really that type of school, very sort of. Um, uh, orderly and uh, and um, I think they more or less model themselves on 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 the, on, the, on the, you know sort of not eaten but you know what I mean that mm. type of, of upper class, of upper class kind of really but I was I was very happy there actually and I boldly did ex all sorts of experimental things I started teaching pottery even though I wouldn't qualify to teach it but at a very low level and then I also was very interested in in, in animation so I actually did films. With, with the youngsters and um, I did a film based on Keep On Running, you know, Spencer Davis group, and sort of, you know, with um, just pho photographing students running in the snow, the patterns, you know, with the uniform against the back, against the white background. And uh, I, I, you know, quite ex in fact, I didn't, any, didn't do anything like that at that college, at that school. What period of time was that? Oh gosh, it, that was in 1965, 66. Uh, as I said, you know, I follow the fears of the heart in me. I, yeah, I'm like that strange, strange, strange person. I decided that um, the person who was with at the time decided to come to Manchester and I decided to follow. So I just left my job, which was a silly thing to do, but just ups and ever, Mr. Egner didn't want me to leave. Oh yes, yeah, I mean, say yes, I, I barged my way into the, into the education offices and asked for work. Uh, it was just quite, um, I didn't, I see, I'm very naivety really. I was very naive, I didn't know how things work. Because I was always, uh, you know, at college and, and so on, and I, I, I had this mindset, okay, I'm qualified, I worked hard to get what I got, I'm qualified, now I, I need to work. And um, I need to get work, and people are going to give me work, basically. <laughs> so it was a very naive way of thinking. So but I walked in the education office and asked for um, the art officer at the time. He was a very nice man, I have to say. Very patient. Very, I can't remember his name, but I can see him now. And, um, and I asked to see him. And um, I told him, so what can I do for you? I said, well, I've, I'm qualified, I'm fully qualified to teach art of specialism. And I would like to get, have a job, please. Well, actually, um, I came, went to Yorkshire in, about in, in after, I think basically it's after I retired from, because I taught at, uh, uh, there's a bit where I have to tell you about, because in fact, mm. um, while I was in Manchester, after that job at, at Openshaw, I then got the job at 
in, at Withenshaw, at the comprehensive school in Withenshaw, was the first comprehensive school that um, at the, was an experiment really that uh, Manchester had. And while I was there, I almost left teaching because it was so difficult, so hard. You know, it was really, a, you know, I don't know why it was that. It was a huge school and almost, you know, the police was always coming in there for something or the other. Um, you know, um, and it was really, really tough. Um, and I was really, I used to get really upset about it. Um, and I was almost left until one of the teachers said to me, listen, we all have the same experience you have. You just have to soldier on, just get on with it. Um, so I stayed. Um, and I realized that, in fact, I had a little bit of success teaching when some, some, of the, some kids who actually left school and were in the fourth formers and, and you know, fifth formers that left school, they were really, you know, the skinhead types, you know, mm. chains and things, you know, they, they didn't care very much. Well, they must be nice kids because they, they came back one day um, after they left and I, you know, I was teaching and I could see them at the door because the art department was a little set, of, set apart from the main, main building. And I saw them and I thought, oh my gosh, what are they, what are they doing here? They come to dove me up because <laughs> they, you know, they, they gave me so much trouble when I was teaching and they really come to sort me out there. And I still came on and I said to them, I said, what do you want? What can I do for you? What do you want? He said, oh, sir, we come to see you. I said, why? <laughs> he said, we, we just come to see you. We thought we, we liked you. You were, you were one of the best teachers. We, we liked you. And I thought, oh, gosh. And I said, okay, if I was just the wrong time, uh, they're going to be uh, lunchtime. So the form I was teaching dismissed, and then they came in, and we had a long chat. And, um, I suddenly realized, wait a minute, so I must have been doing something right here. And at that point, as I said, right now, it's time for me to leave. Because I'd, if I'd left feeling that I, I was not teaching properly or something was wrong, that would have been a bad thing. So I left after that. I thought, I'm right, positive. Uh, positive, I thought, right. But I, I didn't just leave like that. I applied for a, a, a lecturer job at an FE college. And, and I got that, you know, and I stayed there for quite a while. It was a, it was, we ran a huge art department. Uh, it was a huge, we ran, we did foundation here, studies for people who after the A-levels, A -level, they came to us. And um, we taught them, you know, art. And it was great, lovely, lovely time there. People were getting to know who I, you know, I was, I was getting workshops and offers to do things. In fact, it was during that period that the Arts Council phoned me and offered me, an art said to me they wanted me to be on the panel for purchasing for the National Collection. And when was that? That was, oh gosh, in the, it's, I think it was in, must have been the, set, is it 80, 80, early 80s? Around that time. And, and I actually was quite amazed because I, I was in my studio, during that period of, after work I was working in a, in, in a studio in Salford. I had a studio on the, in Salford. And I got this phone call, you know, um, after I left work, went in painting, and they said to me, um, um, Mr. Lance, yeah, yes, yes, um, there's art council here. And I thought, ooh, I said, ooh, the puffs, who are you going to buy a painting, you know? And um, she says, um, it was Isabel Johnstone, she says, um, we would like you to be on our panel for buying paint for our artworks for our the National Arts Council National Collection. And I was so dumbstruck. I I didn't answer at first. So she said, you're there? Uh, yeah. And I said, yes. Um, I said, why me? Silly question. Why me? You know, she said, well, because we know about you. We, we, we know what you've been doing. We know about you. And we thought we, we'd like to offer you the position to come, I you think know, we don't ask everybody, she said, we don't ask, I think you're about, I think she's either the first or second person from the north we're asking to do this. And I said, oh, thank you very much. And it was during that period that, um, and maybe this is one of the reasons why they thought, okay, fine, this guy, you know, he, um, you know, he's much more interested in, in, in this art, he's not interested in, in, in getting promotion in the college in that way. Because in fact, to get that particular job, um, Sandinen, now who is who is actually? I remember meeting him at the corner house in Manchester. 
he is now um, director of the National Gallery, Poetry Gallery. He he was at Arts Council at the time. And he saw me, in, he's a lovely man, big smile on his face. He said, oh, John Lyons, we're very happy to, that you're going to be, be part of the panel. I said, yes, um, I, I, yeah, I'd love to do this, but I don't know how I can do it. I, I'm, I'm teaching, you know? It's, and he said, well, you know, it should be interesting for you to do. Not only that, it's, it's sort of prestige for the college where you're teaching, you know, it's with, because it's a very important job. We didn't ask everybody. And I said, well, I'll tell you what you do for me, if you want, really want me to be on the panel, will you actually, um, all that you're telling me now, could you write to the college and tell, tell them that? So this is what he did. So I got this, you know, came out to me and said, the, what, what did the director say, why you? <laughs> he said, why you? You know, I said, I, I mean, why me? Um, he said, well, you know, they're asking you to, to be on this panel for a national collection, to, you know, sort of um, said, uh, well, we have to see about that. All my colleagues tried to help me then, you know, um, so that I can get the time, because I had actually time, you know, time due to me, because I was doing evening classes, and I was also, you know, had a, so there's two half days made one day, and exceptionally, the director, which was kind of him really, agreed to let me have that time to go to London to attend meetings and to, mm. you know, and during the holidays, I, of course, I went around actually looking at other artist studios because we had to go around to artist studios and buy work f for for the collection, yeah. and that's what. Um, so during that, so I think all that. Um, so when I had the opportunity to leave, by that time, um, I had been doing stuff outside college Quite and. A long time. Yeah, and um, so it was a great opportunity for me to carry on, really. Because if I had a family then, I said, my, this is my time, you all are sleeping, this is my time, you can't take this away from me. Uh, it's my sacrifice, I'm not sleeping, and that's why I, I, so I was always working, mm -hmm. never, never stopped, you know, so they, you know, it's, you know because some people think I'm a little bit of a workaholic, some people say I'm, you're, you're focused, but if you, you know, I think if you're an artist, you know, it's a way of life. It's not, not you know, it's not a job just to nine to five. It's a, you know, it's a way of life, really. It's interestingly enough, I, I had this business of always wanting to have a gallery. But I never really thought about it seriously. But I remember traveling around Manchester and other places. And every time I saw an empty place, I always assessed that place as a gallery. I never really, you know, you know what you do. I'm sure you walk around and, oh, it would be nice to have a gallery there, right? That's all. So when I moved to Yorkshire, I decided I must have a studio because I had studios in Salford. So we went and we saw him and then he said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, we want to have a studio. I then said, wait a minute. This could be a gallery, <laughs> secretly, so. So this why this is also it's always known as the Howard Gas Studio Gallery. Because I tried to set up a studio in the gallery and would have the rest as a as 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 you know for, for pictures and but it wasn't mainly for me the pitch actually it was um I don't know, I don't ask me why, I have no idea why I did it. But maybe is that that drive to be teaching was still there. And um, so I thought, right, okay, we'll run this as a, as a gallery to give opportunities to other artists. Because you realize the times we've had a gallery, I've only exhibited twice on my own. There was always other artists we were giving opportunities to. to. And, um, and then we decided to run um, Saturday morning art classes for youngsters. Because I thought that's one good way to get parents and people involved. So we ran Saturday morning art classes. And then we did evening life drawing. We did a creative writing course. I ran a watercolor class for retired people. So it was always, we always had this educational thing going, okay. apart from the art, working you know, artists. And, um, and it was called the Hourglass Educational Arts Development Services Heads. 
And where was that? And that was in Heaven Bridge. In Heaven in Bridge. Um, so we had a board of directors, you know, and uh, at that time I was uh, I was on the board, but I was on the board as a as as, a, as a one of the directors as advisor to the board, if you like. We had about two lawyers, two lawyers on it, accountant. We had really people who knew what they were doing. Alan Smith, who was the head of Bradford Art College, he he was an old Goldsmiths person I knew mm -hmm. from Goldsmiths. He he be, he was chair chair chairman chairman or chairperson. And um, it was great. It was it's a lot of hard work. It was seven, twenty four seven. We never had. Uh, when we left there, we went home, and cooked. We just carried on talking about it and planning. And so it was like it was really really intense. And the, you know um, work at, at, and eventually heads started doing. You know we did some fantastic projects. We did drawing on the earth. We travelled around through Yorkshire. Um, you know, we did a lot, um, you know, a lot of, uh, helped a lot of artists, youngsters. But I never really thought of myself as a poet. I didn't. But I was not on my radar ambition at all. But I wrote poetry, <laughs> you know. And uh, it so happened that um, I just, there was a, you know, there was a prize, they stopped it now. It's, um, it's a poet's. Um, Oh, um, Liverpool poets run by uh, oh, names again. It's a matter. It was a, for Afro Caribbean and Asian arts uh, uh, um, poets, and I sent a poem up for that, and uh, I said, you know, you do these things, you forget, you send it. And then I got a phone call saying, is that John Lance? Yes, we got 500 pounds checked for you. What for? Because you've, you've won the, the Peter Lou Poets Pies. And I thought, and then the name appeared in the papers, and I thought, hey, you know, I'm a poet. <laughs> You're talking about me as a poet, you know, so I must be a poet, you know, so, so I think, and, and, it's th and during that period, I, there's a whole clutch of prizes I won, got recommended on the, on the national, the big national poetry competition. I won the Northern Poetry Prize. I won, you know, it's, it's, what all, or six different prizes started coming into that period. And the Arts Council gave me an award for my first, by the time, by the time I published Love the Cascadero, the first book. And um, I just left, retired uh, from, from college, and, and that book has been published around that year. And, uh, and I was eligible for it because I didn't have a full-time job, mm. you know, and I was writing. And uh, it was £6,000, you, know, you know, the big one. They don't do that anymore, but I remember it was Ramesh Ganeskar and, um, and myself, we, we, for that particular one and other people for literature. And that's quite good. I remember going, coming home with this, this check. I thought, I'm going to be mugged. <laughs> No, but it was good. So that was a good war award. It was a major for me, really, and which which gave me a bit of confidence, really. If yeah, you know, if they must think I, I could write. And um, yeah, and um, I always remember when I went uh, when I was got commended. It was a year in Duhigg won, and uh, the prize. And um, I went down with a little poem because you know, um, humble and tidal ways with the poem. I wrote and I commended prize, and uh, I thought I'm going to go down anyway. I'm, it's not a money prize; it's just commended. But I'm I'm invited to go, and I'm in the I'm in the, the anthology. I'm going. I went down there, and I met, and there was James Berry on the other side. He came out and he said, "Hey, boy, it's good to see another black man here." You know, <laughs> well, uh, because he, you know, so it was because he he's the one who inspired me. You know, because um, in the early days. He, when he won his National Poetry Competition Prize, I thought, wow, gosh, hmm. You know, you think like that after a while, you know, so he was, uh, black people always have difficulties getting, they've got to be better than everybody else before they can get anywhere, you know. And he was there, and I thought, wow, gosh, there must be hope for me. So he was a big inspiration. He was an inspiration. Can I just like, talk, talk to you a little bit about your poetry and your art? I mean, how much do you think does your culture influence 
Yeah, ah, and your poetry. Oh, Can you my talk to me a little? Gosh, bit? Um, well, most of uh, my most of my paintings are about folklore, legend. You know, all the stories we like Sukunya, about carnival. It's all about my culture, really. But it's all it's about my culture. It's a subject matter. Yet it's, it's within the. It's, it's within the, 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 you know, the language, if you like, of, or the form of, of modernism, you know, is, you know, they, they're not, they're not naive paintings in a sense, you know, they, they, because I'm, obviously if you go to art college and you learn the language of, and I, I spoke to you before earlier on and I said that for me it's a language, it's a visual language, and you know, just as writing, it's as you write. You know, you, you words and put sentences together, you paint and you put shape and forms together. For me, it's a language, you know, uh, and that's why I actually think how I think of it. So, therefore, um, they may be about Trinidad or the Caribbean islands, they may be about the myths and folks and legends, but at the same time, they're within the idiom of, 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 of you know, what do I call it? Progressive modernism, apparently, what they say. Because the people who are, who are, whom I like, uh, I like people like Matisse, Picasso. I admire for his energy, his demonic energy, <laughs> energy. Um, Matisse, Braque is another one I like, and, and uh, people like um, um, what's his name? Uh, that Scottish poet, Scottish um, painter. Um, is there wrong somewhere? Um, B Jean Bellany, Bellany. Uh, you know, uh, what I like is the freedom. I, I think that. Um, it's, you know, in the first instance, I do not um, accept anymore um, things as I see them. A little bit of that has come from the, from the science, science scientists talking about physics, physics and what things are, the nature of what things are, right, physically. It's an illusion. Everything's in a state of flux and it's moving all the time, you know. Uh, and so therefore, art imitates life in a way. It is a, it's through the process, it's through a development and movement and process. Everything's moving, the universe is moving, it's speeding away. The, the sun, the earth runs around the sun. You know, everything's movement. Why do people want everything to be static and to hold on to things? The, one of the best things is, one of the, uh, how I think is, once you can accept that everything changes, just change, you have a good time. Because you're not going to hold on to anything, you know it's, you know it's going to change anyway. So while I'm doing this, let me enjoy this moment. Let's enjoy doing it, the process, because the end product is something else. So that's what my paintings. I enjoy the process of painting, mixing paint, and putting it on. That's where the art is. The result is an end product, which is a new starting point, something else for. Thing. But it's, that is a living process. Art is a living process, it's like breathing, like whatever you do, you know. Yeah. You know. And I put that principle into everything I do. My cooking is the same thing, you know. That goes into my cooking, it goes into my writing, it goes into, you know, that's what it's about. And that's what I, would, I you know, the, I think most artists, what they want to do is to not separate the art from their life. They want to live. They want what they think and feel. They want it to be expressed through the art to do. Bringing those two together are important. Once you can do that, oh, you know. And of course, if you think like that, you're not thinking about selling, you're not thinking about commercial aspect of it. You're not thinking about cows and fields at all. You'd appreciate, of course, if somebody buys your work. You know, if someone buys your work and they, and they like what you do. But do not let that be the motivation for painting, writing. It is a the determination to move on, and, and also the other thing too is that um, is I don't know. It's not a religious thing. It's more spiritual thing for me. Um, I think that because we're so we <laughs> we we are creatures of of a little blue and green peck of a planet in a vast universe. We all on put here and for some strange reason we've been educated to 
to believe we are separate mm. from each other, from the earth. And on a level we are not at all. Um, and I think, and that is really the thing that drives me really quite a lot. I, I, um, I, I don't, I try not to see separations like that. I try to, to, I look for similarities and for the way we, you know, um, to a point where you can't go any further, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's where, you know, in that, in that, I'll put it in that, I call it a moment of, of silence, a moment of even dark and silence from which, from where all the manifestations come from. That is, uh, is that, that interests me really. Mm -hmm. So when I meet the scientists and they started, the first thing they say, I'm an atheist, right? I don't believe. I said, fair enough, okay, it's all right. Nothing's wrong with that, it's up, it's up to your thing. But there's some, they, when they say this to me, they, they're telling me that because they want everything has got to be explained scientifically. And I would say to them, so excuse me, um, you know, is, 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 from my point of view, you know, um, I don't want that certainty. I want to be uncertain. Mm. I don't want an answer. I want to keep, <laughs> you know, you know trying to find, because we never, you know, we we'll keep going. And if you do, if you have that attitude, then you, you know, and I tr obviously I try to put it into, into this, because if I start thinking too much when I'm painting, I stop and I do something else. Or I go and I do something else. It's quite irrational, you know. I, you know, because I don't want, I want it to come from somewhere else, because I think, I don't know, there are different ways of learning. You, we, we learn through, um, you know, we, we, we learn, we have a, we got reason, we got a brain, we can reason, we can logic, we can analyze, we can, but we also learn to put things back together in a different way. You know, we've got to synthesize as well. And, um, and there's also an intuitive way of learning. And I think if scientists would, they're not sure about it, they try to explain that away. They try to explain consciousness as well, you know, and, and it interests me. You know, they can't do that. I mean, see, the very thing they're looking for, <laughs> it's right in front of them. You know, you know I me, mean? it's, it's, it's very strange. You know, um, we're living within the thing we are actually, you know, m mysterious about and trying to, you know, find out we're looking in the wrong places sometimes, I think. So um, all this really is what fires my effort uh, for most things, really, you know, yeah. you know but I'm, you know, I, I'm curious about everything, ridiculously, childishly, curious about everything. I don't. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure how much. <laughs> how I've been very, oh, no, <laughs> very helpful at all about oh, you anything. Are. It's been very, very yeah, interesting. Yeah. Really but um, yeah, um, yeah. I wish I'd said a bit more about my paintings, but I think I've said enough, isn't it? It's, it's just the right amount, uh, right, you know, the essence, if you like, spirit of it, rather, you know, rather than saying, oh, I use this brush, the number five brush, and I, and I want to paint clouds, I paint it this way. And <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't do that. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you.